okay so moving on to mobile phones okay so we are talking about mobile phones use a sim card okay so this particular card that we fix on our mobile phones in order to make telephone calls and send sms's to connect to the internet this particular card is what we call a sim card okay and sim basically stands for subscriber identity module okay so uh, a sim card is used to identify the subscriber to a mobile phone network okay so if your sim card is not fixed in your mobile phone there is no way you're going to be able to make calls and there is no way you're going to be able to send sms's or connect to the mobile network okay once you connect this sim card to your mobile phone okay then you would be able to connect to a particular mobile phone network for example if you're using in sri lanka you will be able to connect to dialog maybe hutch yatel mobitel okay it depends uh, so in order for a mobile phone to be able to connect to a phone network a sim card has to be fixed into it okay now when i say mobile phone i am not referring to a smartphone when i say mobile phone i'm talking about any device that can connect to a net phone network okay basically i'm not talking about only smartphones i'm talking about any device that can connect to a mobile phone network that comes under the category of mobile phone then, okay uh, in our next slide we are learning about specialist phones phones that have been made for a specific uh, set of people okay so if you look at this particular phone it's called the alto 2 talking phone okay it reads names and text messages aloud to its users okay so this particular phone what does it do it's suitable for people who are having visual problems okay people who are visually impaired people who cannot see properly can use this phone which is known as the alto 2 talking phone so this particular phone keeps narrating whatever is on the screen to the user who is using the phone okay then there is something called uh, this phone uh, i don't remember the name of this phone it is a phone put out by dialog and it is a phone for the elderly people so if you look at this phone the screen is not very big but you can see the numbers are very large in size okay then <clears throat> dialog also put out a phone for children who are going to school it is known as a suraksha phone okay so this phone is made specifically for children go, uh, for, for children who are going to school okay so this phone it can take on it can call only five different numbers okay and, and only that five numbers can call this phone nothing else can be done in this phone okay so this particular phone was in, invented solely for children who are going to school so that they, their parents can you know keep in touch with them okay so this is what we call specialist phones phones which are made for a specific task okay these are just a few examples that i have given you over here moving on uh, now we come on to something known as smartphones smartphones i'm sure all of you are extremely familiar with the reason we call it smartphone is because this phone can be connected to wifi or can be connected to the internet using your sim card okay so phones which can connect to wifi or connect to the internet are referred to as smartphones okay so over here it says they are small computers okay they are computers they accept data they process and they give you information and they give you output but they are very small in size extremely portable okay and they have wifi and mobile phone connectivity to allow them to make phone calls and access the internet okay they also include some extra features such as cameras media players and they are also, they also can be used as handheld game consoles okay so then when it comes on to your mobile phone you can download apps okay apps can be downloaded onto the smartphone which allows users to customize their smartphone with entertainment education and business features okay so using apps you can use your smartphone for various other reasons as well okay those days the phone was used only for making calls and sending sms's but now because there are so many apps that can be downloaded you can use your mobile phone for entertainment purposes for educational purposes and even for business purposes okay so most smartphones use a touch screen to allow users to input information so they have a virtual keyboard a virtual keyboard is used to enter text numbers and other characters okay so if you look at this picture over here you can see this is a touch screen that is being used it's having a virtual keyboard okay a keyboard which is placed on a touch screen okay 
then uh, because they combine so many features because smartphones can allow users to do so many tasks okay smartphones use more power than other types of mobile phone okay that is so true okay one of the most important features when it comes to purchasing a, purchasing a smartphone is checking the power of your battery okay because the more the number of apps you use the more the number of features that your smartphone offers you the more battery it's going to consume okay so this means that they have a shorter battery life and need to be charged more regularly than other mobile phones okay so phones which do not have access to the internet phones which do not have wi-fi feature in them phones which do not have camera in them their battery is going to last for a very long time but when it comes to smartphone since it has access to the internet since it has you know games in it since it has a camera in it since it has you know uh, so many apps that are always running in the background you're always going to find that your smartphone battery is always going to uh, finish quickly sometimes at the end of the day you have to recharge your phone okay but now what's happening is developers of smartphones are you know day by day putting more and more powerful batteries into uh, smartphones okay so nowadays you can find certain smartphones can last for a day and a half okay certain smartphones their batteries can last for two days okay uh, mobile phone manufacturers are you know day by day trying to put better or what you call it, more longer lasting batteries into the phones okay so once we're done with smartphones we come on to another device which has a touch screen but is a bit uh, bigger in size than a smartphone this is referred to as tablets okay so if you look at tablets certain tablets go up to now smartphone is generally from about four inches all the way up to around eight inches okay okay but uh, tablets for example they start from around eight inches and go all the way up to 14 to 15 inches okay so a tablet is uh, what you call the uh, tablet devices or tablets are bigger than smartphones but they have very 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 similar features okay so for example a tablet device has a touch screen they have apps in them they have wi-fi connectivity to provide access to the internet some tablets also have a sim card slot is it clear? Not all the tablets, certain tablets also allow users to connect a SIM card to it. So when there is no Wi-Fi, using the SIM card, they can access the internet. Okay. Then moving on, we come to something which is known as cameras and camcorders. Okay. Uh, so before we talk about this, something that you need to know is in today's world, cameras and camcorders are losing their popularity because smartphones are now coming with cameras that are sometimes more powerful than having a digital camera for example okay if you look at samsung's s10 if you look at uh, uh, the uh, the uh, iphone xs and the xr okay if you look at those versions the cameras are so good if you look at what huawei is doing if you look at what xiaomi is doing okay all of them are putting out phones which are having extremely uh, powerful cameras Cameras, okay some of those cameras are more powerful than the modern day camera itself okay so these devices are no longer very popular okay and I think maybe in a few years time they're going to be completely replaced by smartphones okay so uh, digital cameras and camcorders use light sensors to capture images formed by light passing through the devices lens okay so traditionally cameras used to capture still images and camcorders are used to capture moving images so basically you can say a camera is used to take photographs camcorders are used to take videos okay so in your next slide they have just shown you the uh, structure of a camera okay they have just shown you the outside structure and this is uh, the internal structure of a camera your exam will not be questioning you about this this is just some extra information for you on how the camera works uh, please do go through it if you are interested okay then uh, coming on to something else okay so when we talk about videos okay when you talk about videos moving images which are known as movies are simply a sequence of images called frames okay so when you take a video when you take a movie it is just a bunch of frames that are moving very fast okay so when movie now look at this particular clip this clip is having uh, what did it say in one second six frames are moving if you look at this one in one second 24 frames are moving 
what you need to understand is high frame rates produce smooth results whereas low frame rates can produce results that appear to stutter or jump okay so do remember high quality videos okay high quality videos will always high have more frames moving in one second okay so uh, this is what this diagram over here is trying to explain okay here in one second only six frames are moving but here in one second 24 frames are moving each frame is one image okay so when the images move really fast a very smooth movie is created or very smooth action is created okay so do remember high frame rates produce smooth results okay then when we come on to cameras <coughs> you need to understand this also applies to the mobile phone camera the quality of the image depends upon three qualities okay so quality number one is the quality of the lens okay so what does a lens do a good lens allows light to travel through it without introducing any defects without introducing any problems it also allows the user to choose how much light can travel through it so if your mobile phone is having an extremely good quality lens the lens will define how much light should travel in okay you have seen certain photo, uh, certain cameras <coughs> you take a picture and then you see the you the, the, the picture is not very clear because too much of light has appeared on the photograph and the photograph is appearing too shiny for certain places you take a photograph and photograph is not clear because it appears too dark okay but if you have a camera which is having a very good lens a lens will always be a good lens will always be will always allow the correct amount of light to enter okay just the perfect amount of light to take the best picture okay so one factor is the quality of the lens okay the second factor is image processor a good image processor can compensate for poor lighting conditions so, so uh, image processor is what once the picture has been taken an image processor can improve that picture so you can see nowadays when they advertise mobile phone cameras they tell you the image processor is very good okay you can take a picture in a very dark area but the camera's image processor can automatically add light to the image and show the dark areas okay so your second factor is image processor okay and finally resolution of the sensor so what does the resolution of the sensor do better quality sensor can capture more detail and produce images with a greater number of pixels so when we say pixels every dot that makes up an image every dot that forms an image is known as pixels okay so the more the number of pixels the better the quality of the image okay let me repeat again every dot that makes up an image is known as a pixel so when there are a large number of pixels the quality of the image increases okay so if you look over here Okay, you can see resolution of uh, certain cameras. Uh, nowadays, almost all smartphones are coming with more than 8 megapixel. Okay, almost all smartphones today, the camera is more than 8 megapixel. You have 16, 21, 48 megapixels. Okay, nowadays, mobile phones which are coming out, okay, are coming with 21 megapixel cameras, 48 megapixel cameras. Okay. So then the resolution of the sensor is very high. So you take a picture, there's going to be a huge number of dots that make up the image. So the quality of the image is going to be, you know, almost crystal clear. Okay. So do remember the quality of an image depends on these three factors, the quality of the lens, the image processor and the resolution of the sensor. Okay. Then moving on to televisions. Okay. TVs. <coughs> okay. So televisions display still and moving images on a screen. The quality of the image is set by the number of pixels that are used to display the image. This is referred to as a screen's resolution. Okay. So uh, the resolution of a television in pixels is stated as <coughs> horizontal pixels versus, uh, by vertical pixels. Okay. So let me explain to you. Uh, so for example, when you buy a television, they would tell you the resolution is 1280 by 720 which means in terms of uh, width there will be 1280 dots and by height there will be 720 dots okay so uh, this would be referred to as 720 pixels okay so when you purchase televisions they would tell you the resolution of the screen how powerful is i mean how powerful uh, is the screen on the television okay so 
the more the number of pixels that the screen can display the better the quality of the images okay so uh, there are two videos over here two videos done by two companies which produce televisions and these are basically two advertisements okay please do watch it okay uh, these are two companies that are trying to express how great their televisions are they can express how great the resolution of their televisions are okay uh, moving on then okay so these are a few pictures okay what you need to understand is this is a bulky tv this is a tv that tv screen that was used many years ago and this is known as what we call the crt screen cathode ray tube okay and then we had something which we call the l uh, lcd liquid crystal display and today we are dealing with something which we call led light emitting diode display okay so there are just a few pictures of television screens okay and nowadays certain televisions are coming with something which we call 8k 8k means inside the screen the screen can accommodate 8000 pixels so when you watch this television you actually feel like you are in this particular place okay if you're watching a movie you will actually feel like you are in the movie that crystal clear the uh, display would be okay you have 8k you have 4k okay so this number basically defines the number of pixels the number of dots that are used to make up the image okay uh, then you also have home entertainment systems so certain televisions they also come in with built-in speakers okay so you have these speakers you don't have one speaker you have multiple speakers which you can fix around you okay so you have the theater kind of feeling okay so most modern televisions can be connected to an external sound system to improve their sound quality okay so uh, nowadays televisions can also be connected to the internet okay so for example you can connect your television to the internet and you can use netflix for example you can use youtube for example so when a television can be connected to the internet that particular television is referred to, uh, referred to as a smart television or a smart TV okay just remember when television can be connected to the internet we refer to it as a smart TV or a smart television okay so with that uh, we'll stop this video please do try and complete uh, questions 6 all the way up to question number 10 okay in our next video we'll be continuing from sound systems